take a dream, throw in a dash of American practicality, add some volunteers, and, and what do you get? A school in rural Ghana that will surprise you. And it all started with an African man born on a Friday. No, under normal circumstances, when you are born that day, they give you that name. So by virtue of me born down south, they gave me the name Kofi Mensa, which means a Friday born. An uncle then nicknamed him Charles the Great and moved him to the remote northern region of Ghana. Charles was a cattle herder with a gift. He was, by all standards, a quick learner, but he couldn't go to school. He had to tend the cattle. God being on my side, one day I was going to the forest with the cattle when I met a friend whom I had known down south, and his father had died. So he had gone to our hometown with the rest of the family. So he met me and said, oh, are you not in school? And I said, uh, I have been prevented from going to school. And he said, well, let's go. I left the cattle with my other colleagues and then followed him back to school. So I entered class three and I continued from there. In what we would call about fourth grade, Charles read a story about Booker T. Washington, a freed American slave, who would go on to lead the Tuskegee Institute, a teaching college for blacks, and become one of the most powerful African American men of his generation. It was a story Charles never forgot in faraway Ghana. Ghana, the home of the slave trade. <laughs> Against the dramatic turquoise of the shoreline of Almina, Ghana, sit the slave castles. Giant, haunting reminders of the slave trade that flourished from this port. Charles's great-grandfather fought against the slave traders, and Charles embarked on a journey from his hometown to trace the path of his captured ancestors. And I physically saw the baba tree where they were chained, and where they were fed, some of the wells they drank water from. I came to Cape Coast, but I never visited the castle because I didn't really want, I didn't want to actually see how it happened or how it ended. That is, until today. It's a really a sorrowful, a sorrowful day for me. One being that uh, this is my first time here. And one being that all what I have heard has become true because I am visibly here and I'm seeing exactly the buildings they passed through before finally embarking to the West or the West Indies as history books tell us. Are you, are you sad? Are you angry? Well, destiny has no anger. That is destiny and I believe that is how God has written that it should be. Because today, when we look at it, at least we have that joy that our brothers are in safe hands. And at least some of them are thinking of us. Charles held on to the story of the educated, freed U.S. slave Booker T. Washington. Charles graduated from a technical school, worked as a mechanical engineer, and had a comfortable career as a government worker but Charles was an educator at heart. I felt I could uh, follow history, especially knowing very well that the mother of Booker T. Washington was from this, uh, was sent away from this very castle. So Charles, who had one prized possession, a blue Chevy truck, sold it to buy some land to build a school. He named it Tuskegee International School. Why do you want to be an educator? My main concern was about how I grew up. It was rough. So the next thing that I thought was, why can't I, with the education I have had, I have left the civil service. What was I going to do with the education I have had? Was I going to just go into some business that there will be no benefit? So I looked around, and the children were always running around. Some were not in school. So the first thing that came to mind was, why don't you group these children and start something with them? 
The Tuskegee International School opened in 1998 with a few students and rather meager classrooms. But Charles's reputation quickly spread, and any student eager to really learn was soon welcome here, whether they could pay or not. One of our beliefs is that you don't necessarily have to be rich to be here, but you have to be committed to the success and the progress and the future of your child in order for you to be motivated enough to put whatever resources you have in your child. So this is one of the encouragements that we have held to. So we keep on drumming to parents. Just get your child prepared. Food, shelter, clothing, and push him to us. Auxiliary and the pronoun. The school now has 170 students from age 2 to 14 years. And for Charles, it is just a way of living up to what his ancestors might expect. I am proud to say that I am linked somehow to the history of the founder of uh, Tuskegee Institute. Uh, I don't know what happened. I think it's a spiritual linkage. I thank God for whatever has happened and is happening because it is not strange. It's only strange before human beings, but it's not strange before God. So this is part of your destiny? Yes, I believe it is part of my destiny. And today has confirmed that it is part of my destiny. What Charles can't foresee is how his destiny is going to be shaped yet again, not by a spirit, but by something as modern as an email. Stay with us.